Hello nursing friends. I am making this video so that you can see if you're interested in home health nursing, private duty nursing, not just home health, but private duty nursing where you work in a home with one client so you can see what a typical day looks like for us. Now I am this client's mom if you're not a subscriber to my channel so I don't have to hide anything. There's no HIPAA violations because she's my daughter. And I'm making this video honestly in hopes that more people will learn what this job is, private duty nursing, and we'll see it is a viable option because there are so many pluses to picking private duty nursing as a nursing job. And every client's gonna be different. For example, a lot of them have trachs. My daughter does not have a trach. Some of them are ambulatory. My daughter is not ambulatory. So kids that need private duty nursing, you know, have a variety of severe medical conditions. So you're not gonna get another kid exactly like Raylan. There will be different duties. Um, and even day to day, Raylan got a shower yesterday, which means we don't have to have a shower today, which saves quite a bit of time. So, but I'm gonna show you a 16 hour shift and about how long it takes to do all the things so you can see what it's like. But when you do private duty nursing, sometimes you might work a four hour shift, you might work an eight hour shift, 10 hour shift, 12 hour shift. It's kind of, to be honest, where I live, it's whatever you want. <laughs> Parents will give you the hours they want you to work, but there's enough of a shortage that usually they can't work those hours. I'll take what I can get. So this is a very flexible job. Rarely, rarely are nurses doing 16 hour shifts in my home. I don't want to say it's never happened. I've been in the hospital. We've taken a nurse with us on a trip. We wanted to do uh, an outing with our big kids, like almost three hours away from the house. Those are times we've had a nurse work 16 hour shifts. But that is pretty rare. So I'm showing you 16 hours so you can see stuff, but that is a long shift. Here we go. Here's what it's like to be a private duty nurse. First thing you will do anytime you're uh, doing private duty nursing is when you come in, you will get a report from another trained caregiver. So that could be mom or dad. Good morning, Raylan. Anyways, you will get morning report. That can be from any trained caregiver. So it could be the night nurse if you just if you're relieving another nurse, or the day nurse if you're coming in to do night nursing and you're relieving another nurse, or it could be mom or dad, or it could be grandma or an older sibling if they're a trained caregiver. And trained caregivers mean someone that you can leave alone with the child. So it can't be grandma or grandpa if grandma or grandpa aren't trained where you could leave your shift at the end of the day and they would know how to take care of her. They're not trained. So my mom, I'm gonna give myself morning report. She had a pretty good night. She's been up um, for at least 30 minutes now. She wore her BiPAP with her oxygen last night. She needed oxygen with it. Got off of it about 2.20 in the morning cause she was fussing. About 6.30, we had seizure. She is on a clonopin bridge right now because we emailed her neurologist, Dr. Tomko. He recommended Clonopin Bridge. Since we've been having more seizures, it helped a lot yesterday, so hopefully it helps today. She did not poop yesterday. She did get a bath yesterday, and that's about it. So that's my morning report. I would tell a nurse that I just reminded myself of, and now we're gonna get started. Hey, well, I'm gonna turn on the light, okay? That's on. There you go. Okay, I have my paperwork. I also see there's a trash can full back here. It is my job as a nurse to help keep her room clean and that includes emptying trash, even trash cans that I didn't fill. I can tell you that as parents, we filled that trash can yesterday evening. We went to bed and honestly, taking trash out right before bed was not on our mind. I mean, she is poopy, I thought so. So first thing I'm gonna do before anything else is empty this trash and put a new bag in so that I have somewhere to put this poopy diaper. And then I will take that trash out and put it in another new bag. And so I'm ready to throw stuff in there. And then I'm not gonna show you details of changing a diaper, but we're gonna change this diaper, then I'll be back. All right, uh, that diaper change took a little less than five minutes. I'm experienced with Raylan's poopy diapers. They're kind of a mess. If I wasn't experienced, that might've taken me more like 10 minutes, but uh, it wasn't too bad. She has not peed, I don't think. It's kind of hard to tell with the diaper with stool in it, but I don't think she's peed. 
She retains urine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is catheter because she has not peed since uh, late last night then before she went to bed. So I'm gonna catheter and then I'm gonna turn her food rate up on her food pump to 57 because it goes at a lower rate at night so that mom and dad don't have to get up in the middle of the night to catheter. To be honest, she could use more fluids, but doctors understand you just can't always do everything. You're not a robot, but if we have night nursing, we have her fluid run sometimes at a higher rate and her get capped in the middle of the night. Sometimes we just stick to that lower rate because it interrupts her sleep. It just depends on what our needs are. More fluids or more sleep for her. But the catheter, I have these really nice cath kits. We've made videos about them before, so they're awesome. I don't think everyone's blessed to have this nice of cath kits. 180 Medical is who supplies them for us. I think they're a national company, so yeah. Shout out to 180 Medical. So, Cather, and then clean up this room a little bit. All right, so it's about 15 after, so I received a report from mom. I changed the baby diaper, a cath Raylan. Now we're gonna take out the trash so that the room's not smelly, especially with that poopy diaper. Assessment should be your first thing after getting a report from mom, but I'm not gonna let her sit in a poopy diaper and I'm not gonna let her be uncomfortable with a full bladder. We don't always do things completely by the book, so we're gonna do what's best for our patient, which should be close to the book. However, I mean, I did just give her a look over, which is a, you know, a short assessment. And I looked at her, pulse ox was hooked up. I could tell her heart rate and her oxygen were good. So I'm gonna wash my hands now though, and then I'm gonna do a head to toe assessment. A lot of agencies have electronic charting and it's on an iPad, but some agencies still do paper charting. I'm with an agency that does paper charting. I don't know, it's about 50-50. Probably more agencies do electronic charting. So here is what we're gonna be doing. We have this that we will fill out at the top, but the main assessment thing is right here and there's the hours. So I will chart this stuff. Look, it even tells me what to do next, like bath, range of motion, AFO's repositioning. I'm gonna put our diaper changes there under seven o'clock hour. And then, let's see, this one is lungs. We're gonna do some lung stuff. It's more for documenting lungs. That's where I put my time, my work. And then narrative can go right here. So let's start our head to toe assessment and then we'll get started with chart it. I'm gonna chart it and get it up to date. Mommy, listen to you. That's cool. Can you squeeze your arm? So yesterday she got a shower and we try to shower every other day. So I am going to come in here though, get a bin and fill it with some warm soapy water and then do a bed bath. I'm not going to show you that. You know what a bed bath looks like. Uh, Raylan doesn't want you to watch her get a bed bath. I'm going to get her dressed and we're on to our next thing. You're going to use whatever the family preferences for bathing. Uh, we just use a little bit of shampoo. This is fancy shampoo. It's Rusk's. Activated charcoal purifying shampoo. We're not picky though. We use whatever shampoo. So just a little bit. That might be too much. That might get our water too soapy. I'm gonna actually take some of that out. It came out really fast. Just that much shampoo and warm water. Let me rinse that off my hands. Warm soapy water here. Three washcloths, hand towel. We're gonna get her cleaned up. Mostly focus on hands, feet, armpits bottom uh yeah let's get cleaned up all right we got a bed bath we got our deodorant on which we did a little bit of range of motion during the bed bath and deodorant but not quite enough so we'll need to do range of motion still we still need to brush our teeth but we have a thing we do twice a day 
more often when she's sick that takes about 20 minutes and we're gonna start with that that is her shaker vest and shaker vest takes 20 minutes if these kids get this in the hospital the respiratory therapist stays in the room with them the entire time it happens so it does sometimes provoke them to cough and get some stuff out of their lungs so it's good to stay close by while they're doing it this really is a great time to do your charting if a kid has shaker vest so i'm gonna put her shaker vest on and we're gonna start that you ready shake 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 huh yeah. We just push the pause button on the shaker vest because of a seizure. Uh, Berlin has a VNS magnet, so we scan it right here, and that can sometimes help a little bit to slow them down. Sometimes she needs suctioning during a seizure. This one's not too, too bad. To be honest, she got most of that, so I think we're just gonna not stimulate her more by finishing this. We're just gonna end it early after 15 minutes. Raylan. Looks like that's going away. Is it going away? You're still kind of stiff. Let's get this shaker vest off. Cough assist is kind of noisy. I'm gonna set it on there. You just turn it on. It's really easy. They've already set up the settings for you. There's a button that says therapy. And it blows, sucks, and then takes a pause. Blow, suck, and take a pause. I'm gonna put it on her during the pause. Wow. Kind of push it down. One, suck. Let's do three, Raylan. Two. One more. Oh, that was a good one. Sometimes you need to suction, Raylan. This is more of a lung exercise than getting secretions out. You did really good. Can we do three more? Take a breath. One. Two. You have to really push it down or it'll leak. Three. Good job. You're doing good. If she were to cough up stuff, we would suction. Keep suction close by the bed. I don't think there's too much here. One more. We do three sets of three, then we're all done with this. Breath. One. Good. Two. Good. Three. Last one. Good job with that. If she's sick, we might do that five sets of five in every four hours. But if she's doing pretty good, a lot of times we just do three sets of three, and that's after shaker vest. All right, we're good. Next is meds, brushing teeth. One of the important things on here that people might not remember is equipment plugged in and charging. And as a mom, I frequently forget that. So her suction machine is here, but it's not plugged in and charging. And anytime she's not using this portable suction machine, ideally it's plugged in and charging because they don't work great. And when they're fully charged, they work better. Her food pump is plugged in and her lift is plugged in and all this equipment just stays plugged in. So we're good there. That's an important thing to check when you get on a shift and before you leave, especially too. All right, Raylan, before we get our meds, can I brush your teeth? Hmm? Good job. You open up. Good job, Raylan. Almost done. Good job. All right. You're doing good. I'll be back with meds and a new food bag. All right, guys. It's med time. You have a pill crusher. We have end fit syringes that go in the feeding tubes. 
We have these slip tip syringes, which are awesome. They go right into the feeding tube. These go into the infant extensions. These go into the feeding tube. So some of Raylan's meds go in her J-port. We put them in these that have the infant things so they can go in the extension because her extension's coming from her J-port. And then so we don't have to get a second extension or switch them. We have these slip tips, which go straight into the G-port on her feeding tube. So I'm gonna draw up her meds. She does get extra clonopin right now because she's on a bridge with increased seizures. We already saw one this morning. So she doesn't usually get clonopin in the morning. She has glycopyrrolate, which I need to make, uh, you know, nursing judgment and decide does she need it or not as for secretion. She hasn't had a lot, so I'm not giving it to her this morning. It's PRN. She has norethindrone because she started puberty early and that just keeps her period away so she doesn't have to deal with it. Morning meds, we have tizanidine, which is PRN. That's a muscle relaxer. I don't think she needs that this morning. We have Zyrtec, which she takes one of every day. It does not dissolve well. You definitely have to crush it extra good. She has P5P, which is activated B6 or paradoxal 5 phosphate. It maybe helps with seizures. Been on it her whole life. I'm not so sure. It's a capsule, so I just break it open with these meds I'm gonna crush. Throw the capsule away. She has a probiotic capsule. I do the same thing. Uh, she also has an estradiol hormone sticker. Again, that's that's something she does Mondays and Thursdays. Today is not Monday, Thursday, so we don't change that today. And then we have CBD oil, Epidiolex, the pharmaceutical one. And then the fridge, we have omeprazole for heartburn and gabapentin, which just kind of helps her relax her muscles. So I'm gonna crush up these meds and I'm gonna double check the med list while I'm doing that. The med list is on the fridge over there. We have all the meds in the kitchen. And I get warm about 20 mils of water, which only takes about 10 seconds. Check it, that was a little too hot. Add a little water to it. I don't want to give her super hot water in her meds, but I want it warm so it dissolves it. And this is D Manos. It helps her urine was a little cloudy. She gets this every day, one scoop. And look it up, it's kind of interesting. It's a pretty low side effect, harmless little supplement you can take that inhibits growth in your water, bacterial growth in your water. So we have a lot of powder, a lot of powdered meds in here. I just put the plunger out stick a funnel in. I have my hand blocking so all that powder can't come out. The other end. Dump it in. And I put the top plunger on. My hand's still under there so none of that powder can leak out. Shake. Now we're gonna add water to this. Warm water. And if you pull on these plungers just a little bit and shake, it helps them mix. It puts a little pressure in there. It's yellow because of that P5P vitamin, but just a little more water in there. I'm gonna set that to the side. I let that soak for a couple minutes just to make sure those meds are good and dissolved. The Dialex is oily, so it goes in the G port because oil and feeding tubes really don't mix. So if we put in the G port, it goes through less tubing. And omeprazole goes in the G port because it just works better if it goes into her stomach. Put a little air in the syringe so I don't accidentally put oil med into her omeprazole. This is not how you do meds if you were at the hospital. You know, obviously you wouldn't be putting syringes out of one med into another thing because it's cross contamination, but this is just for Raylan. So we do things a little different in the home sometimes. Put five mils of omeprazole. I'll set that one to the side. Gabapentin goes in her J port. So got another infant syringe. And then I need to flush. I'm gonna flush with about 10 mils for her G-port to get that oily residue out of her feeding tube, hopefully. And just six mils for her J-port. Seven, I guess. Uh, and thinner barrels do a little more pressure. So if you're trying to flush really good, a small barrel is better than like a six mil syringe. It's gonna push with more force than a 12 mil syringe or a one mil syringe. If you have a clogged feeding tube, I recommend you get a one mil syringe and try to gently push with it because the smaller the barrel, actually the more force it sends through its physics. I don't quite understand it, but if I thought about it, I bet I could. Not while we're over here and letting those meds soak, I'm gonna make up for food bag for the day because I noticed it was low. She uses Kate Farm. She has a formula. It's written on the fridge with her med, a mixture. We don't just do straight formula. That's two Kate Farms. And 
she gets 260 mils of water, which is essentially another one of these filled to the brim with water. And then she gets 60 mils heavy cream. So she's on a not keto diet, um, but lower carb diet. And we make her formula lower carb by adding some straight cream for part of the calories, which is all fat, 60 mils. And then also uh, protein powder for part of her calories, which is also zero carb. And she gets two scoops of protein powder. Shake that up really good because we don't want that powder plug in our feeding tube. And I'm gonna clean up my mess because that's your job as a home nurse to clean up all the messes you end up making that the patient you're taking care of ends up making or help them clean it up if they're able to. Right, we're gonna squeeze this through. You see the formula going through these tubes. You can prime this on a machine or you can just squeeze this and it will prime it through. Sometimes it goes faster than other times. I feel like squeezing it always goes better than using the machine. I'm trying to hold it at a weird angle though to show you. It comes. That way we're not feeding our patient any air bubbles. And there we go. And this is a pretty minute. We're gonna get an ice pack to set it with out of the freezer. These get too tight too easily, so. Dad's home, I'm gonna ask for his help. He could get it. If he couldn't, I just woulda had to have got a new extension. Then we're gonna hook up the next one and not tighten it too much. Unclamp, then we're gonna put the new bag on here. Stretches over this black thing and then pull and it snaps down in there. Close the lid. I've got an ice pack here that I'm gonna wrap up and a thin cloth so it doesn't sweat all over everything. Got that in her food bag. We're gonna push run. We're gonna put this old ice pack in the freezer, throw away the old food bag, get your meds in you, and then get you up. And it is a little after 8.30. So I've been here about an hour and a half, but I'm just getting to meds. Ideally, I'd be a little quicker, but there's a lot to do. I could have done meds before I did a bath. I kink this here instead of turning off the food pump, and I kink this here instead of clamping, just because I've been doing it a while. Unkink that one, push that med through, kink it back. Gabapentin, unkink, which is like unclamping. Push that med through, back. Have my water flush, unkink, push it through, clamp, screw it on. Those are given. And then these are really cool. I'll show you. This is that slip tip syringe. It's got oil and omeprazole in it. And look at this. It just fits right in there. And then I'm gonna flush it with 10 mils. And meds are done. No, they're not, Miss Raylan. We still have Flonase. I know. I don't like it either. And vitamin D. Ah, it's just a tiny bit. So we can go right in her mouth with that. Alrighty, now meds are done. Not too long after given meds. Now we have time to do charting and catch up. Raylan fell asleep. We still need to do range of motion and get her out of bed, but a lot of times there's some downtime in private duty nursing. And so I'm just gonna give her a little bit of time to rest because we don't have anywhere we have to go today. There's no hurry. So we're gonna let her take a little morning nap. She's listening to me. She's like, be quiet. I'm gonna turn off her light, let her take a little nap and play in about an hour, we'll start range of motion and then getting up out of her chair. One hour later. Did you have a good nap? You're awake. It's time to get some stretching done. I'm gonna turn the light on. Here we go. So I had a good hour break just now. Did some charting and actually this is my house. So I work with my own daughter. So I actually made my kids breakfast. But if you're a nurse in our home, honestly, you probably have time to do some Amazon shopping or write your grocery list or whatnot. I'm gonna get a hairbrush and brush your hair, Raylan. We're gonna do stretches and we're gonna get up for the day, okay? We had a late morning, we're not getting up till after 10. It's okay. That extra climb that made you tired, I think. Hopefully we have less seizures today. 
some of the eyeball shifting is seizure activity. Can you brush your hair over here? You don't want to turn your head that way yet. We'll try that in a little bit. Let's stretch. Let's open our hands. Oh, big stretch. Some issues with this arm. Oh, you're getting tense. Back, shoulder. Does that feel good? Strings. It feels good to get them stretched a little, doesn't it? hair a little better. And I'm just going to move her head a little. She likes to turn it that way, but we try to get her to stretch her neck muscles. So. Alright, so it's 10.30. We transferred Raylan via her ceiling lift into her chair and now it's going to be playtime. We can watch movies, look at her eye gaze, read books, go for a walk, and we just get to do fun stuff honestly for the next few hours till bedtime. And of course we'll put in some more stretches and stuff as we play, just like we're stretching her neck right now but now it's playtime first thing we're gonna do is spend some time watching emily <laughs> play minecraft huh does that look like fun raylan gonna watch big sister play some minecraft i'm gonna chart the stuff we just did it's only our second seizure today it's not bad for 11 11 30. it was short pretty good yeah it's a short one raylan seems a little worn out from that seizure, but we are just gonna enjoy some fresh air now. We're just gonna relax. It's a little, a little bit sunny and warm to be going for a walk. So we're just gonna relax on the shaded patio, 
Play some music, maybe. Blow some bubbles with our bubble maker and just chill out. Nice. A beautiful chair I can sit in. Just got this off Amazon. Zero gravity chair. Oh, it has a spot for my drink. It has a spot for my charting. Isn't that nice? It reclines. If I was in the sun, I could put up the sun visor. I'm gonna chill with you, Raylan. We're gonna chill out to some music and fresh air and bubbles. Let's get our bubbles going. Is it gonna blow? There we go. There we go, Raylan. We got some bubbles going. What do you think? I'm gonna look at some bubbles. Hmm? Hey, we just went for a walk. It's hot out, isn't it? In the heat. I'm tired. Are you tired? You look more awake after that walk. We're gonna get afternoon meds. Then we're gonna lay down in bed because we probably need to empty our bladder. Then maybe watch a movie in bed. And then get back up again. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me, Raylan. Got our B vitamin. It's capsule. I'm just gonna break it up in here again. I do this so that it doesn't leak out. Ooh, Raylan. Let's see. And we got gabapentin, the special infit cap. And I'm going to add a little water to both. And you can see, oh, that powder mixed real well, so I'm going to let it sit for a bit. It's soak. I know I can mix that up good. Uh, I got her room kind of messy, so before I lay her down, I'm going to make sure I just straighten up her bed. Down for a bit. I know that's in your face, isn't it? Up we go. Pop up. Ready? Ooh, there we go. Let's get you just the right spot. You're okay. does not need to be 24 7 hooked up to full socks but if she's going to be laying in bed for a while i usually hook it up those first numbers aren't accurate usually it's probably going to come up if it doesn't we'll do something <coughs> oh maybe <laughs> suction can i have anything all right and that's what we needed that's much better you just need to do a little cough Sometimes in those transitions, she gets secretion stuck. But you're looking good. And that's why we put a face socks on sometimes. Check out how things are going, because you didn't really look that bad. Just had another seizure. That's normal with seizures, but for Raylan, we don't do anything because her numbers come back pretty quickly. Hey Raylan, it's okay. Good cough. I don't think you need suction though. You're doing good. It seems like it's slowing down. And her heart rate's still high, but her oxygen went up. Her heart rate's dropping. So that's normal for Raylan. We do a lot of those. Just stay close. Sometimes she needs suction. Sometimes she needs to turn to her side. Sometimes she needs meds to stop seizures, but not usually. I do think she can hear us though. So we try to be by her and reassure her 
during it. Yeah, you're a little wet. Sometimes we have to cath Raylan in the middle of the day. Uh, sometimes she's able to pee on her own. Seizures, one positive of them is it does help her not retain urine. A lot of times she uh, is able to pee when she has a seizure. So I'm gonna change a diaper and we'll chill out. What happened to your movie? It was on. We started it kind of halfway through, didn't we? We'll watch a little more movie time, then we'll get back up and maybe do our eye gaze. So diaper, chill a little more, it's two o'clock. So that's what we're gonna do. Some range of motion, diaper change, and then we'll get up probably about 30 minutes. All right, we had, oh goodness Raylan, you need a little suction. Yeah, I see it. Diaper. You did some more stretching. I think it's time to get back up. What do you think? You want to get back up? You want to get back up? Are you talking about it? I see you moving around. Are you going to get back up? Roll this way. Roll this way. And now we're ready to get up. I'm going to take your pole socks off. There we go. Ready Got her up in a chair. Yep. So I'm ready to play, Dad. Ready to do your schoolwork? Tell us yes or no. Are you ready to play? Watch Willy Wonka. What'd you think? Putty pillow might help with head positioning in this. This like molds really easily. If you wanna, I think she does a little better for heads. All right, let's go. Let's go do eye gaze stuff. Doing our eye gaze, picking videos, but having some seizure nystagmus, so. Get out the VNS, doing some of that scanning, but you're you're trying to do your eye gaze, aren't you? Sweet. I think you're ready to lay down. Okay, we're gonna get up, okay? Up we go, upsy daisy. Love this lift. Down we go. That was too much moving around, wasn't it? Yeah. You tell those seizures to go away. All right, it's almost eight o'clock. We just transferred her back to bed. She's in a good mood. Changed a diaper. Her food pump's beeping. I'm gonna plug in her lift for the night so it stays charged and we can always use it. I'm gonna see why your food pump's beeping. We probably crimped it somewhere. Yeah, we had it upside down or something. We're gonna fix that, aren't we? So, prime to that. I'm gonna recharge the food pump, charging the lift. I'm gonna remember to charge her suction machine so that it works well. All right. Mm, Raylan, it's time to do some bedtime stuff, okay? We're going to do shaker vest and then cough assist, get in our jammies, throw in a load of laundry, do some final stretching, bedtime meds, and then bypass. 
I gotta be honest, I don't know a real easy way to get this on her. Shake, shake, shake. You sound a little gunky. Finish shake your vest. You've taken your shake your vest off. You had to stop suction a couple times for some coughs. That's good. Got out from under you. We're gonna do cough assist. pajamas thing. All right, we got dressed. We did some range of motion and we've been scanning our VNS a little bit because I see some far eye looking that way, which is sometimes pre-seizure activity for her. But Raylan's in a good mood and she's got her bull socks hooked up so I can hear if she's having any issues. And I'm going to put in a lot of laundry because she has a lot of laundry to do. And um, that is part of home health. This helping do the patient's laundry because it's like Raylan, they just make a lot more laundry than your average person. At least Raylan does, and that's okay. So we're gonna gather up laundry, we're gonna take out trash, wash the laundry, change the trash bag. Put the laundry taken care of. We're gonna brush our teeth again. Ah. Can I get the back ones? Good job. Good job. Let me get those front ones. You're biting it. And these top back ones. Good job. Good job, Raylan. You trash bag in. Raylan, how about we listen to some music before bedtime? Does that sound like a good plan? I'm going to put on some music. Or are you looking at your Kindle? You want to watch a movie or a show? Got a little bit of time. All right, food bag's a little low, so we are going to add a little bit more formula mixture to that and get meds drawn up. All right, bedtime meds drawn up. It is quite a bit. Some in the J port, some in the G port. She also did get a uh, Half a tablet of tizanidine, which is a PRN, uh, just to help with relaxing at night. Some stiffness when we're doing range of motion in the evening. I hear coughing. Let's go suction and give them. We weren't filming. We just gave those right in the G port. Look your mouth, sweetie. There you go. We filled this food bag. I do want to turn her down to 31 mils an hour. She had a wet diaper. Honestly, I'm probably going to cath her right before the end of my shift. So I'm just going to let her run at 57 until I get ready to cath her. That way, she's getting maximum amount of fluid possible. But then we don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to cath her. So I'm going to wait to turn that down and some to wash syringes. So we wash and reuse syringes and we actually have, it's hard to see, but we have some packing tape over them because if we don't put packing tape over them, sometimes we don't, the numbers wear off. And then all we can use them for is crushed meds, not meds we need to measure. So uh, a little shift. This, this, we've already given all the meds we're going to give, so I'm just going to wash all these. Soak them in some warm soapy water, rinse them off, dry them, put them back together, and that's our clean med bin. All right, Raylan also gets a lot of mail. Part of nursing duties is to unpack her 
packages and put her supplies away. So this is from Memorial Home Services, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be respiratory supplies. Let's open it up and see. So yes, it's new suction canisters, suction things, full socks, probes, and tapes. So we will put all these things away where they go. And Raylan has plenty of space for different things. She's got a cabinet here that holds a lot of stuff, and she's got a cabinet there. Most of her medical stuff is in one of those two cabinets. So we will get that put away. You got a seizure, Raylan? It kind of sounded like it. You okay? Why don't you turn off the light? And turn this down a little bit. Make that quieter. Turn off the light. And suction a little. Time to go to sleep soon. So, Raylan keeps beeping briefly and then coming back up. This is common. And she falls asleep at first. But we try to let her fall asleep without her BiPAP on because it just seems like it's a little easier and nicer to put it on her after she's fallen asleep. It's easier for her to just go back to sleep once it's on, then to try to fall asleep with it on the first time. Of course, it's not dropping now, but it's dropped a couple times, so I'm going to get water and this and get her BiPAP on her and also cath her. Probably right before I do that, I'm going to cath her. She'll probably sleep through getting cathed, then I'll turn her food down, so I can just do that now. Don't forget. Fit down to 31 for the night. Gonna catheter and get that BiPAP on because that beeps when it goes under 93. That's probably gonna do that again soon. Yep, there we go. So, but we'll take care of that. Real soon now. When Raylan first gets the BiPAP on, she makes kind of loud snoring noises. A lot of times she needs some suctioning uh, shortly after getting it on. But oxygen did go up a little better. 94. If it beeps because it goes low again, her BiPAP is hooked up to a concentrator and we would turn that on next, turn her concentrator on. But hopefully this is enough. And I'm gonna put a little cough under there to catch drool because she tends to drool in her sleep so her shirt doesn't get all wet. That did just drop to 92 again. It came back up before it beeped, but I'm just gonna go ahead and save some time. We're gonna turn that on. It runs at five liters per minute, and it goes through here, into the BiPAP here. One of the things I do when I put the BiPAP on is make sure we got a good seal. That's good. And look at that. Much better. 95. If not, the next thing we do is reposition her, but I think, I think that's going to keep us 93 or above. Alright guys, it is, what time is it? About 9.30 and Raylan has got everything done that she needs for the day. If I was doing a 16 hour shift and this ended at 11, I would do another head to toe assessment, record all that, put the laundry away. I would have time to do that. It would be washed and dried by the time my shift was in, done. That is 
that's pretty much a typical day with Raylan. That was a few less seizures than normal, a little bit less suctioning than we have a lot of days. And we didn't have any errands to go or any places to go, but that, it's a pretty average day. We have a lot of days that go pretty much exactly like this. So it's a pretty relaxed job. You definitely have enough time to meet all of your patients' needs. Um, I wasn't really working today. I'm not a licensed nurse. I'm still licensed pending. So I was practicing my paperwork, but um, I'm not getting paid for today. I was just doing all that as her mom and recording it. So you can know what it's like as a private duty nurse. I had time to fix my kids lunch and dinner and you know talk to my other kids i had some downtime i had plenty of downtime in addition to taking care of all of raylan's needs i am tired <laughs> it's been a long day but yeah this is a great great job if you're looking for something a little slower paced if you're looking for something where at the end of the day you knew you provided all the care your patient needed because you have enough time to do it and you have what you need to do it it's a great job so hope this helped you get an idea of what it's like day in the life of a private duty nurse.